The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. Welcome to My Brother, My Brother, Me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. I'm your baby brother, Griffin McElroy. Guys, the government is shut down. Scrapping it together. Against all odds. Gum and twine over here, sticking it together with gum and twine. This is the worst conditions under which we have ever recorded a My Brother, My Brother. Let's break it down. Let's break it down. This is the Daddy, I Made You an Ashtray episode. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) You thought that we weren't going to have an episode. Maybe it would have been better if we didn't, but we got hungry mouths to feed. All right? So, so condition one. Condition one, my Macintosh computer made by Apple Corporation is dead. I am recording on a personal computer made by Bill Gates himself, I'm assuming in his college days, because it doesn't have anything. Bill Gates sent Justin an email, said, listen, Justin, I understand you need to scrap together uh, a butt quality episode. I understand that this is something you need to do, so have this Tandy 12 for free. This is the 12th Tandy to roll off the line. I tried to install Java, and a guy came by and poured coffee into my lap. <laughs> it is the worst computer anyone's ever used. I am recording at work at the Cincinnati Shakespeare Company in the ladies' dressing room. Um, I am Skyping through my phone, recording onto my computer, and you may, from time to time, hear them record it, uh, rehearsing of Mice and Men in the background. Um, I am technically at work right now, so that's my that's my cross to bear. Oh, also, I just got married, so that's really slowing me down. We should we should back up and explain that Travis just got married, and let's just say we were a little uh, presumptive in the amount of free time we thought we'd have during Travis's wedding. I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess we had made plans to like. D- ditch all our family and friends and like and then just like mid ceremony like there's there's the homily there's the charge a couple of songs the wine ceremony duck out for a quick record sesh and then the vows yeah fully fully like graduate style sending the family off as we as we run away down the aisles and we did but the episode wasn't that funny so we scrapped it yeah it was mostly travis crying like a little mm-hmm. bitch I'm Travis, sorry. do you want to? Uh, sorry, should we? Uh, let's keep painting a picture of this wedding. Travis, do you want to talk about how many like little bitch tears you cried out? I cried three. No, it was more than three. It was just three. I was I was the best man standing standing it riding shotgun in the cockpit. I only recall three. He had me carry special tissues for him, and mm-hmm. during several times during the wedding, he turned to me and be like, "I'm sorry, I'm such a pussy." <laughs> no, I I had a really bad <laughs> nosebleed. Yeah, and I needed the tissue, uh, so I didn't get from a beautiful eyes. dress with water. And my blood. eyes were bleeding because I was crying so hard, like a pussy. Oh, oh, oh! I forgot to re- mention one of the things. I'm using a Battlefield Three keyboard on my personal computer, and this is literally what it sounds like. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Oh, Jesus, you sound like a <laughs> hacker on CSI. <laughs> that is literally enhance, enhance. This that is literally what it sounds like. So, um, taking them, taking them back to the good old days, the rock band microphone days of like, <laughs> the rock band days. So. I used to like those days because I could hold the microphone like Sinbad, mm-hmm. and you know, if if I had a good line, I could literally drop it. Mm-hmm. Here, if I drop it, you know, I got to go back to Amazon and buy a new one. God, these days. So this is a, an advice show for the modern era where we help young people uh, and old people, I assume. Uh, from time to time, navigate the rocky waters of life, and uh, let's let's get into that right now. When my husband and I watch our favorite serial dramas, I prefer to let things unfold without trying too hard to guess what's going to happen next. My husband is the type who likes to guess what's going to happen out loud, and he's often right. His correct guesses include some key points in the season two finale of Boardwalk Empire and the series finale of Breaking Bad, moments that would have been pretty jaw-dropping to a passive viewer like myself, had he not already predicted what was going to happen. I asked him to quit sharing his spoilers with me and keep quiet till the show's over. He said they're not technically spoilers, 
since he doesn't know what's going to happen. He's just guessing. Um, there's more to this question, but I think we get the gist. That's from passive versus predictive in Portland. The thing is, that there's two different ways he could be doing that. Like, Teresa does this, but it's usually just out of fear and tension where she says, like, oh, he's not going to die, is he? There's, he's not, they're not going to kill him, are they? Versus they're going to kill him. It's pa- yeah. it's these are still spoilers. Though. I think if you guess something correctly in the past and it turns out to be true, you spoiled it. You did spoil it. It's oh, a presumptive I mean, I spoiler. I agree but either it's a way because it's usually like I, I I always hate it when you're watching something you've already seen with someone who hasn't and you can remember it being this huge reveal moment and then that person being like, "Ah, oh, he's going to fall down the stairs." And you're like, "What? Um, just watch it." I have a I have an alternative to suggest uh for you to suggest to your husband. It was a cool move that I pulled once when uh, some friends and I were watching the uh, one of the mini season premieres of Twenty Four. Uh, oh, I remember didn't this. Watch this, that is program. A, this is a baller move on your part. This is a baller move. I I uh, I had a feeling, and I got a little scrap of paper, and I folded it. I wrote, wrote a note on it, and I folded it, and I uh, just showed everybody the note, and I put it down on the table, and then uh, again, here comes the spoilers if you haven't watched. And then at, uh, when this tri- incredible moment happened, I took out my scrap of paper that said, President Palmer will be assassinated before the first commercial break. And then he was. And then you dropped it on the table like the fucking finale of Rounders. Like, check my style out. I think you actually said, check my style out. And you threw it Check this style. Check this dope style I have. But, I mean, but the other, the other end to that choose your own adventure is that you lay it down and then you just slowly reach out and pick it back up and eat it. <laughs> Or you just, just just slowly slip it into my mouth. Or you just fucking like take it home and it like sits on your dresser for a while and every once in a while you look at it and just think about what a stupid idiot you are. Like what? I went yeah, through but- all that fucking trouble. That is a that's a baller play, Justin, I'm not gonna lie. But if it doesn't pan out, that's a that's a cross you have to bear for the rest of your life. Like knowing that that's- you spent the time to you, you put in even like a little stamp on the envelope, mm-hmm. which seemed excessive to me. That'll make him count it though. Like if, he has to be really sure before he opens his pen. Oh, that's true. To write. Yeah, his pen. He's got to be his pen mouth to be absolutely concretely sure that this is what is going to happen in the series, uh, which which might help to stave off his uh, his spoiling. Our dad used to be the worst, the the worst or the best. Like, well, dad would like subconsciously so spoil something where he wouldn't say anything. He would just go, ah, uh, okay. And you're like, what? <laughs> wait, hold on, what? What is it? And he's like, no, just watch. I think I know. I think just I know. watch. And mm-hmm. and and that was a, another level because we could never prove or disprove the correctness of his theory. He oh, might have just he, been doing that. Yeah, that might just be a dad move that dads can pull. Ah, uh, I see what's happening. Oh, okay. I think, I think you should just keep your mouth shut. Just enjoy it together. Just enjoy the moments together, and then afterwards he can say. That's what I thought was going to happen in my brain, but I didn't say anything about it out of courtesy. My dad will still text me, like during Doctor Who. Mm-hmm. He's like, "I know it's, ha- I know what's happening." Like, okay, all right, you live in another state now. You can't keep doing this to me. I'm my own man. I have a wife and a home. I'm a grown Stop adult. Stop terrorizing me. <laughs> y'all want a Yahoo? Yeah. Um, this <laughs> it sounds like. To us, just see, it probably sounds fine when you're listening to this at home. It sounds to us like Travis is being held in a Russian prison. It sounds like they <laughs> gave him a payphone to call his brothers. That and- is actually what we're doing for our honeymoon. It's a whole experience that you can sign up for and you spend uh, a week in a gulag. Travis actually was a founding member of Pussy Riot. <laughs> he thought that he was signing up for some sort of rad party. Um, but no. But no, he's he was actually in a feminist punk band. Do you guys want a, a Yahoo? I asked you this and you said yes. Uh, this Yahoo was sent in by Drew Davenport. Thanks, Drew. It's by Yahoo Answers user Miana who asks, What can you do while you're pregnant to make baby be born with a head full of hair? <laughs> that's it. Eat a lot of hair. Next I think, question. I think that's pretty good. I think if you can eat the, a lot of hair and some sort of bonding agent, that is... Ooh, that's a tricky needle to thread because you're gonna need something that's gonna make it through your gully works without uh, mm-hmm. stopping stopping the shit up, but it still has to be cohesive enough to bond the hair together into some sort Bubble of bubblegum, uh, a fetus wig. The ter- the terrible uh, risk that you're running there is that your baby 
will see it and it comes in with all the other food you're eating because mm-hmm. he's a stupid baby. Things like, oh, the same food? Donut hat. It comes oh, out. I was going the other way. Where you end up with some some food on their head. Or he has a taste for hair. He just loves to eat hair. It's all osmosis down there in the in the early months of the formation of the feti, right? It's all os, os, osmotic, right? Mm-hmm. The, all it's of all these, osmosis Jones. All of these, if this fucking osmosis Jones that's growing inside of you, it's just a big bag of translucent... Um, cells and shit. Anything can pass through there. You got to be careful. You, if you eat a Frito and it goes down the wrong pipe, that baby is going to come out with with Frito hands because mm-hmm. it's just it, 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 your tummy doesn't know what's up. It doesn't know where to put things. By the way, Tim Burton, I don't know why you thought that Edward Scissorhands needed a follow up, <laughs> but <laughs> Ricky Frito hands is not no. is not in keeping with your. I'll vision, always I remember he's, he was totally crunchtastic. It's the best. It's the best Christmas ever. Um, uh, you can probably just eat a bunch of hair, and then nature finds a way. You know, he'll figure things out in there. What about this? Ch 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 chia. What is? You just said a slogan of a thing. I don't. Ch 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 chia. <laughs> it's the pottery that grows. Yeah, we know what it is clearly, but how does this? How is it? You're going to need to swallow. I think it was like mud with some seeds in it. And then, with your like belly hands, smooth it onto the baby's head. With your so you're a little bit unclear just about the basic mechanics. Of the you machine. got the belly hands in there, and that's what puts the baby together. I like, think like that like Travis Travis factory. has a fundamental misunderstanding of gully works. No, you, they put it together like in a factory, and that's what that's what Daddy told me. You're saying that every woman's uterus contains a set of hands, like the tunnel mm-hmm. in the labyrinth. That, yes. that Jennifer Connelly falls down through, and then the hands push the baby down. But while the baby is in there, they put the parts together. That's why. That's why the dude says push, and then the hands all push it. This is a horrifying. I I never. Happy Halloween. I never want anybody. <laughs> <laughs> that's the spooky twist of pregnancy. I never want anybody to be pregnant again. Now. No. Nope. Yeah. That's really the, that's the pregnancy. plot line to story uh, children of men. All the hands like fuck it. Yeah, fuck we're, it. We're done. <laughs> we're on strike. <laughs> they all got Game Boy advances and they just stop working. Is there a way that you can copulate? Cuz from what I understand, life life obviously starts at inception. I mean conception. Life started with when the movie Inception was made. <laughs> life starts with conception. Um, Before that was all amoebas was, and sun. Uh, more like life starts at deception. Yeah. Ugh, not Trying to, trying to get my money or something. I don't know. Uh, there's, there's. I think that there's a way to like chop and screw and get the kind of baby that you want to get while you are um, chopping and screwing. If you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. I think that it's I like don't. you know how they say like wait till there's a full moon and then have sex upside down on a couch while saying ABCs with the Wolfman. With a Wolfman, and then that's how you, um, you know, that's how you have a strong baby. Mm-hmm. I think there's probably a method of copulation that you can exercise uh, to make sure that you got a, a hirsute you, child. You gotta have, you gotta do it uh, whilst on a treadmill and eating a plate full of angel hair pasta, no sauce. That's uh, quite the balancing act. Does it? Can it well, be on like? Do you want a hairy baby or not? That's how I prep for marathons. It can't be the same procedure. Mm-hmm. That well, doesn't be make careful. Any sense. Be careful. You might get pregnant with a hairy baby. <laughs> Man. Pregnancy is the weirdest. Once you're pregnant, it's probably too late to be Italian, isn't it? Because I think that that seems to be a pretty good method I to, think, to hairiness. I think like. uh, by the point that you are conceived not by Italian people, that ship done sailed. This was my fear. I was afraid you were going to say that. I don't think. But I had to take a shot. I don't think there's a way to remix it put in the post. <laughs> but we'll fix it. It's white? Eh. Don't worry about it. Fix it in post. Don't worry about it. Guys, I've been dating my boyfriend for about six months now. He came to me with a predicament. He wants to recreate his image, mainly his wardrobe, to look more adult as he prepares to graduate college in May. He is a relatively skinny guy, and the clothes he wears right now are too big on him and make him look a lot younger. He asked for my help, but here's my worry. I know exactly the look I want him to have. Kind of a Joseph Gordon-Levitt vibe. But don't yeah, come on. Yeah, you and me both, sister. Come on. Yeah, yeah. If you figure that one out, let me know. 
Uh, how do I help him with his new wardrobe without seeming pushy and aggressive? And like, I really hate what he wears now. How can I get on that JGL grind? <laughs> That's from Baggy in Boston. I, I think mean, I have a, I have a real answer. Go ahead, Travis. Oh, great. Here's my real answer. So what you need to do is uh, to plug a video clip. He was just on uh, Jimmy Kimmel. No, he was on Jimmy Fallon. No, he, did like he was a, on a lip. Jimmy no, Johns. He, he was on. He was at a Jimmy Johns, and Travis saw him. He was on Jimmy Neutron. Boy genius. He was on Jimmy Durante's show from heaven. Oh, this is fun. The talk show from heaven. But he so he's on uh, Jimmy Fallon, and they did like a uh, lip sync off. Show yeah. him that clip, and while you're watching that clip, say like, "God, that's a be- that's an awesome jacket." Yeah. And just like start and just do that every time. Man, look you at those jeans. Look like at that. those jean shorts because he's wearing jean shorts. <laughs> he was wearing jorts, and just like subtly plant things like that, you know, and, and anytime you see something, rather than go, you should buy that jacket, say like, oh, that's a, that's a rocking jacket. Oh, what a I think that looks really good on you. Don't you want to be him? Well, maybe don't take it that far. Travis has brought us a response to this question from an alternate dimension where any man ever has picked up on subtext or contextual clues. Mm. No, no, no. Because that's what never I, No, because what I'm saying is you're planting it in his subconscious so that when he goes shopping, and he sees a jacket like that, he's going to go, oh, I like that jacket. He is not going to go out looking for that jacket. I No, absolutely not, Travis. No. I'm sorry. Maybe we have different methods of shopping. When I go into a men's clothing store, I'm running around like Dorothy when those trees are throwing apples at yeah. her. Okay? Uh, my, <laughs> I'm just, my, any, anything I can get a grip on, I'm reaching through the darkness, screaming at the top of my lungs, hoping against hope that I can find s- solid ground where I'm not going to get any more. My entire my MO is not um, WWJGLD. It is, God damn, I hope I don't embarrass myself in here. Let's just find Let's just find the things. I'll go to Old Navy. I'll take in 10 shirts because one of them will fit. And then I'll very uh, hurriedly and embarrassedly just toss the other nine on the put-away table, the this is your problem now table, and then and then skirt my way on out of there. And even yeah, that and one, the- even that one's not going to fit. It'll work on the sleeves, definitely not in the neck and chest area. And that is why... With that lack of self confidence, you guys will never be married. Well, that's <laughs> not true for Justin, and almost certainly not true for me. Um, All right, I'm just oh, saying I some see. of us okay. some of us are a bit too chesty and necky to be a JGL. Then, some, then you, well, that I mean, that's the thing. I would love to dress like JGL, but like, frankly, I got this like barrel chest and uh, start of a beer gut. Like, <sighs> I can't pull it off. I'm gonna look like a fucking uh, sausage just broken through its casing. Yeah. Travis will look like a carnival barker. He can't. He can't do it. Not again. He'll look like a Joseph Gordon-Levitt that has busted through its case. <laughs> it's it's horrible. We have another failed clone, sir. Oh Damn God, it. we left him in the pan too long. <laughs> God, that's the problem with artisanal Joseph Gordon-Levitt. You know, it's, mm-hmm. sure it looks great, it looks rustic, mm-hmm. but it's always bursting through its casing as soon as it hits the, the front sage pan. crusted potatoes. Come out really, really well, but the the JGL, I don't know. Unless you're using a thick casing, uh, some it all depends on how how thick was your JGL grind. Yeah, yeah. If it's if it's too fine, then it's like you're eating JGL putty. Too coarse, yep. and it's like a crunchy JGL putty. You mm-hmm. got to split the uprights. This is why JGL success late in life is is a great indicator that nobody knows anything. Nobody knows a goddamn. If you've been thing. watching Third Rock from the Sun and looked at that little bastard mm-hmm. and thought he is gifted. Mm-hmm. He is going places. He's not going to fall into the chasm where we keep all the other Jody Sweetens and the like. Mm-hmm. He's going to bust right out and be his own man. I, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't. <laughs> Chuck him in the sweeten furnace. <laughs> Just throw him in there. Make sure his casing doesn't. But fall. wait a second. Look through the window. He's untouched. It is Shadrach, Meshach, uh, Meshach Abednego, and, Abednego. and JGL. I saw a fourth figure in the flames. Was it an angel? Kind of. Kind of. Did you see Five Hundred Days of Summer? He dances like dances one. Dances like a fucking angel. Dresses like one. Sings like one. My wife loves George. George Who Gordon doesn't? Love it he's so my much. perfect. Everyone little, loves him. He's my perfect little sausage boy. So good. I wish they hadn't janked up his face in uh, in the the looper. In a looper, yeah. That should that should be a war crime. Yeah. Those people should should. They, you want to talk about somebody who should be thrown in a gulag? It's the it's the people Here's who the messed thing. up. If I might bitch about mug. looper for one moment, I've never seen a movie in which an actor played. 
a younger version of an older actor that's also in the film yeah, nope. and been bothered by the fact that they didn't look alike? Not how it worked. It looked more like they had put him and Bruce Willis into what will a, our baby look like generator <laughs> and then aged him 25 years. <laughs> I think that I think that JGL's look is so on point that Bruce Willis, Willis should have had to got reconstructive surgery to look, to like look more like JGL. Yeah. Permanent JGL overhaul. I would have preferred that instead of making JGL look like a JGL BW hybrid in in Looper, um, it, if they had just made him look completely like old school Bruno, like um, when he was recording music, you know what I mean? Mm. Back in the you know, like Hudson Hawk Hudson era. Hudson Hawk era, <laughs> fucking pot jazz BW. When it was can we just can we just like Photoshop in just like CGI in. Hudson Hawk into Looper in place of JGL, and then maybe just also like CGI in um, like JGL just over in the corner, crossing his arms and shaking his head. Yeah, I bet originally they made JGL look like uh, music slash Hudson Hawk era Bruce Willie, but he just couldn't help but jam with himself. Mm -hmm. Like every time he saw me, he's like, I can't, we gotta, I gotta jam. kill you. Come on. I gotta kill you, but that'll kill me. You're right. Hold this saxophone. <laughs> Let's jam. Let's just jam. My yearly get together with some of my old friends is coming up. I'm excited to see them again. But one thing is different. One of them has a kid since the last time we saw them. I absolutely detest holding babies. But I'm sure the child will be passed around at some point. Is there any way to decline without making the moment awkward? Or should I just suck it up and play along, pretending I'm not screaming on the inside? That's from Indisposed in Indiana. Just tell them legally you're not allowed to be within 300 yards of a child. Yeah, that'll go really, seems, really well, I think. Yeah. Seems bad. That'll keep her from being awkward. Man, you want to talk about being afraid of popping something outside of its casing. Just, can, can babies, can babies, fir what can you do during copulation to give your baby thicker, firmer skin? I feel like I can see through every baby I hold. And that's. I uh, want to really build up my baby's chitin. Yeah. I don't think that's too much to ask a baby a shell. Strong exoskeleton. Here's what you do. In the kitchen, you keep a tray of jelly. When the baby starts being passed around, you run into the kitchen, dip your hands in the jelly, yeah. and say something like, just cooking Sorry. up some jelly things. I'm doing something in here. Doing something in here, and then rush out when it's your turn, and say, ah. Oh, uh, would love to. Love to hold the baby. Got jelly on my hands, though. Can't at the moam. Because of the jelly, and I'm does it have to be jelly? Because I feel like there's a myriad of things that if you had on your hands, the parents would not want you to. If like, you got jelly child. in a baby's crevices, do you know how long you'd have to work to get all that gunk out? You know how many folds mm -hmm. they Justin, have. You're f they have a spot. You're forgetting something though. This this baby's probably already going to have quite a bit of jelly on it. This baby's already going to have a preternatural layer of self jelly. Um, that that the, the the parents are gonna be like, ah, don't worry about it. It's just you you know you're just gonna add. add we'll to hose the pile. him down in the back. Yeah, it's, it, we have we hose him every ten minutes. So like, go ahead and get that jelly on there. Okay, all right, all right. So It'll make it easier right. actually up. to see the other jelly that's already on this kid if you just go ahead and jelly <laughs> jelly him up. Like plot candy, right. basically. What if you bring them like a baby shower kind of present and you're like, hey, I got this for you. It's a baby suit of armor. Are you worried about hurting the baby? I, Is that the problem? Oh, or are you just like, ew? I think it's... I don't get uh, it. Who doesn't love holding beautiful it's babies? It's an embarrassment thing. How are you even supposed to hold... How do you hold a baby, Justin? Let me critique it. How do, you, how do you hold a baby? Fireman's carry. Like, uh, I, by, their, uh, by their heel, like I'm going to dip them in a lake and give them a, a blessing. See, there's no mm. right way to do it. Because there's only one right... There's, there's one right way to hold a baby, but that you way you throw him over your shoulder like a continental soldier. No, no, no. You scoop, you scoop him, and you you scoop him right in the your loving crevice of your arms, right? And, and you, you have right to support the head, or it falls off. If you do that to a stranger <laughs> baby, though, it feels like you're trying to steal. It looks like you're trying to steal it, right? And when you hold it like that, it looks like you're trying to 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 supersede the parents and become the new parent, and that's way oh. too forward. Oh, okay. I've got an idea, and it'll it'll force you to hold the baby, but for the shortest amount of time possible. Hold the baby, and then go right into the Heisman. I guarantee those parents will take that baby back from you. Travis, I feel like you're being a little devil may care with this baby's life. Heisman, yeah, a little yeah. reckless. Well, I like, like the jelly idea. I feel like there's something you could have on your hands at all times that would preclude. But like, what are babies? 
vulnerabilities? Like, what are you babies mean, weak to? Everything. Um, Maybe you have some, like, raccoons on your hands. Okay. If you could coat your hands in raccoons, I think you'd be out of baby duty. Oh, bad schools. Yeah. Have bad schools on your hands. Have, can you cover yourself <laughs> in bad schools? <laughs> can you get another baby? Let's say uh, this is my baby, and I'm bonding, so I don't want to mess up the bonding. Ooh, process. Get another baby that has like tattoos and is smoking a cigarette, and then the parents will be like, "Well, I don't want my baby around that baby." A tougher baby. That's you should be able to rent a tougher of. baby for a day. I I'm really nervous to hold babies. I'm right there with really? you. Yeah, I really am. I super am. It really is a. I still don't think I've mastered the hold yet. It's the same way I feel self conscious when using chopsticks. Is the same way I feel when using baby. You you just need to hold the baby a couple times. You know you're not gonna get better out if you don't try. Yeah. No one has babies in Austin though, because every like I've said before, it's a it's a nation of the humidity of eighteen year olds. Also, yeah, nobody wants to get up on all these swamp balls that are floating around down here. <gasps> Do you want to make love? Uh, I don't know. Hey guys, uh, I have to get paid. Let's go to money. everybody about Warby Parker. He's a, a friend of ours that we've talked about a few times, and I've seen many of you getting into his wares. So uh, if you haven't gotten on board yet, these are contemporary eyeglasses that are extremely affordable and fashion forward. They, uh, these are not your daddy's glasses. These are prescription glasses that start at $95, including prescription lenses including prescription lenses. It's written twice here. I don't think I'm supposed to say it twice, but I said it again with emphasis. <laughs> Travis probably pasted it bad. Uh, all the glasses have anti-reflective and anti-glare coating at no additional cost. See, here's so here's the best thing. When you call them and you say, hey, I want five pairs of glasses, they're going to bring them to you. Warby's going to get into the Warby mobile. Mm -hmm. He's going to drive down to your house with a suitcase. He went, Psst, the Warby machine. The Warby machine. He's going to uh, come to your house. He's going to let you try on these five pairs of glasses, show your family and friends. Don't worry. He'll wait. He'll just sit there. But he will not eat your food. He won't. He won't hold your baby. All right? He's he he's not a friend of the family. He's a glasses salesman. If Warby's too busy to visit you, he will uh, ship them out. Uh, you get to hang on to him, pick the glasses, or the, I guess just the one pair you want. Then you send the rest back. Normally they get there within 10 business days, but we got a promo code, uh, my brother, that you use at checkout and you're gonna get them faster. So there's that, so that's fantastic. Uh, and here's the best part, well not the best part, but a good part for every pair of glasses they sell, they distribute a pair of glasses to someone in need, fantastic. You can get non-prescription Polaroid sunglasses from 95 bucks, Polaroid sunglasses, Polaroid sunglasses that don't exist, you can get those for like a million because they're not real. And then polarized sunglasses from $150. Visit warbyparker.com slash my brother to select your five home try-on frames. When you're ready to purchase, enter promo code my brother at your final checkout. Get your prescription glasses, sunglasses, or reading glasses at warbyparker.com slash my You guys brother. know me. I fucking love my Randy Jacksons. I fucking love these yeah. things. They have been allowing me to see in crystal clear HD vision for a super long time. I'm ready to throw these motherfuckers in the street. Yeah, all thanks to the pressure provided war by Warby Parker. Trav, how, uh, you've been married now for a few days. How you been uh, spending your time with your new bride? We've been watching Hulu Plus, like, nonstop. Bullshit, really? Yeah. Well, that's a great segue, Trav. <laughs> Tell me about it. Well, Hulu Plus, you can watch all your favorite shows anytime, anywhere. So whether you're sitting in front of you know your Xbox or you're in your hotel room the night after your wedding making love, you can watch Hulu oh Plus God. anywhere. Oh my God! Ugh, I, 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 it all streams in HD, right? That's what I've heard. That is correct. And, and Hulu Plus has a lot of uh, your favorite shows like Saturday Night Live, Community, and Family Guy. You can also check out there's uh, original programming like The Awesomes from SNL Seth Meyers and Moon Boy, which stars Chris Adad from Bridesmaids. Uh, they also have you know not just TV shows; they have uh, films on there too, and uh, it's only seven ninety nine a month, and you can Bullsh stream. You can That's ridiculous. I know. Like, how are they possibly making money, except for the fact that I guess you don't use it up by watching the TV show. So that's it's actually that's a not. Cool. It's a nonprofit, actually. So they're not making money. It's just everybody should be seeing Parks and Rec. 
Um, so uh-huh. they're, it's like a government provided service. I'm amazed that they're keeping it afloat despite the despite the government shutdown. Here's better news. You can go try it free for two weeks when you go to hulu.com slash my brother. Uh, that's a that's a and a special offer just for you guys. Huluplus.com slash my brother. Please use that URL so they know that we are all powerful. Um, and, uh, you know, any website you go to, just end it with slash my brother because mm-hmm. you never know. Maybe we got a bonus for you. It's hard to guys, say. Guys, I got a message for Zoe uh, from uh, Alden who says, Happy birthday to the best sister and one of my best friends. Sorry it's a little late. My bad. Her birthday was September 25th. God damn, Alden. Dang, you by a mile. Th- of course, part of that is because we're recording so late, but hey. Thank you for introducing me to Mabim Bam, by which I mean playing it in the car until I gave in and started downloading it and listening to it myself. Now, it's a favorite podcast of mine. Here's to another great year. I love you. Man, I love when people do advertisements and they advertise us in the advertisements. It's like double. Yeah, that's going to help like build our brand. Double good no for kidding. us. That's really great. Thank you to Zoe for being so considerate and helping to spread the word about our podcast to people who listen to our podcast. That's a free plug. Hey, you know what I like to make my plugs out of? What's that? Cow manure. Farm wisdom. Farm wisdom. That sounds awful. Call and meet your Uncle Jake at the Lake Farm Wisdom. I wish Jake would stop hanging out with places only that rhyme with him. <laughs> so I was like, you want to go to Pizza Hut, Uncle Jake? He's like, nah, can't. Nope. I'll meet you at Cookie Break, where they fix your brakes. <laughs> so I don't want to go there. Not cookie, not cookies. <laughs> so wait, at Cookie Break, they fix your brakes? They don't prepare cookies? I said, I said quickie, quickie Break. Quickie Break? I thought you said Cookie Man, I wish break. I could have a conversation with Justin without him hearing ghost cookie words. Travis, are you okay? I am. It sounds like you're at the bottom of the ocean and you're pushing, you're trying to bury your microphone in the silt. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds terrible over there. Do you guys want to hear some farm bullshit? Yeah, sure. This, we were told that this is farm bullshit and think of it like Yahoo Answers version of farm wisdom. Uh, these are all actual superstitious suggestions for farmers from the Canadian edition of the Farmer's Almanac. Oh my God. Never thank a person for giving you a plant or it will die. In fact, the best way to ensure that plant slips that that plant slips will thrive is to steal them. Wow, f- man! <laughs> this is from the official Canadian Farmers Almanac. It is yep. endorsing larceny. Peppers should only be planted by a violent-tempered person, a red-headed person, or a person in a bad mood. I don't think there's anyone in the world who's not in a bad mood when they're doing chores. Travis, what is going on? Flax will grow tall if you show it your buttocks. Flax. Okay, come on. No, fla- this is true. Flax is fucking nasty. Flax, yeah. will, flax just... will trick you, too. Flax will be like, hey, I dropped some flax seed over there for you to harvest. It's on the ground behind me. Why don't you go ahead and pick that up, girl? Okay, now, this, now this I have problems with. To cure flax founder in a horse, cut three locks of hair from your private parts. Place them between the halves of an apple or potato and feed it to the horse. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so Canadian farmers are basically witches. Mm-hmm. Is that what we're getting at here? And their plants mm-hmm. are perverts. It's it's that's this is why I can't. I just have never been able to endorse the practice of eating Canadian produce because they're all sex and they're all full of pubes. Stop! <laughs> you have two apples in your hand. You're like, um, looks like my horse needs a snack. What is that, founder? Let me just shove some pubes up in there. Wait, shit! Which apple do I put the pubes in? Do I cut the red <laughs> wire or the blue wire? God, you work so hard to build a relationship with your horse. Can you imagine the the risking that bond, that eternal, like interdimensional bond, by feeding it your own pubes? Maybe your horse is like, "Hey, I've got founder. I don't. I still don't know what that is. Ah, uh, man, I've got a real bad case of founder. Hey, Mike. <laughs> hey, Mike. Can I ask a favor? Let me get some of that bush. <laughs> Mike, I got a weird question for you, buddy. I know we got a bond, and I don't want to overstep my horse bounds, but make it, why don't you shave off a couple of sprigs? <laughs> make it a couple of sprigs of your zone. Can you imagine? Let me paint the horror story for you. This is the, the, the situation that everybody wants to think about. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. What's that? Is that? Hey, hey, Doug, did I? Were you asleep? Hey, sorry, Doug. Listen, uh... My founder's really flowing. Really bad over and, here. Uh, really. Walgreens is already there. closed. 
They had no bush at Walgreens. Mm. They were closed. And I just, I need to get a quick gnaw on your sprigs. Now, Mike, I can't help it. This looks like head hair, and I appreciate it, but I feel like you're trying to dupe me, Mike, Doug, Doug, Mike. Mike, Doug. Mike, Doug. Thought we were boys. Thought we were boys. Couldn't spare a couple pubos, huh? I watch you in the shower. I know what you got going on down there. You got bush to spare, dog. <laughs> I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I mean, you got bush for days. Tuck some of them sprigs in a tater. Hi, welcome to Denny's. Would you like to try our new sprigs in a tater? No. <laughs> welcome to Guy Fieri's restaurant. Guy, Guy Fieri's restaurant. Restaurant. Try our sprigs in a tater. Hey, what's up with these little hairs? They're high lit on the end. They're high lit on the end. They've got goggles wrapped around them. Yeah, that's how you know. That's how you know it's authentic. Authentic Fieri cuisine. I'm Cameron Esposito, the host of Wham Bam Pow. This is an action and sci-fi movie podcast on MaximumFun.org. We talk about punching. We talk about car chases. We talk about uh, arms, muscles that are on arms. And every week I'm joined by panelist Rhea Butcher. That's me. And of course, also... Ricky Carmona. Oh, I'm all up in it. That's what's up. The Afro spokesman. We are going to give you all of the jokes and all of the happiness and all of the information that you need to watch action sci-fi films to the fullest. Mm. Find it at MaximumFun.org or you can subscribe on iTunes. I have been married for four years and my wife complained to me today that I don't tell her she is pretty anymore. I don't like saying the word pretty and I can't say beautiful without sounding sarcastic. What can I say to make my wife, uh, what can I say to my wife to convince her I still find her attractive? That's from Still Sexy in Salt Lake. Hey, you need to start saying pretty. Just get over yeah. it. How's Listen, that? Actions speak louder than words. So the action you have to do is saying these embarrassing words to let mm -hmm. your wife know how. No, because it's true. You're so pretty. I don't know. It doesn't sound good. And I feel what they're saying. Like, you look so beautiful. I feel like a character in the room when I say that word. Yeah, but the thing is, it ain't about you, dog. Like, I feel stupid saying this. Well, okay. Like, throughout time, that's like 60% of people in romantic stuff. Watch. But, like, you do it because she wants you to. Here's what you do. You got to watch the season premiere of any season of The Bachelorette and listen to the adjectives that these fools drop. They are. They're mm -hmm. gonna have so many different. They ones. are out of control. Surprisingly, no. There's only like two or three, two or three alternatives. But they drop them every other sentence. You look so stunning. Doesn't she look stunning? Look at how stunning she is. You're stunning. Look at how stunting she is. She's doing all kinds <laughs> of sweet tricks. Look how stunted she is. Look she at how she'll stunted. be like five six, look five her, seven. Look at her little, little nubby arms. <laughs> Look how stunned she is. She's just sitting there, Look mouth at agape. She's just lying there on the floor because she she tried to steal a cop car. That was a, Look how a terrible idea. Look how stumped she is. That was a great riddle, I told her. <laughs> Look at how stumpled she is. That's a word I just made up because I'm afraid to say pretty. Pretty. Oh, God. Just say pretty. Move on with your life. Just say pretty. Do you guys want a Yahoo? Yes. This Yahoo was sent in by Alan Black. Thank you, Alan Black. It's by Yahoo Answers user Andre, who asks, Nipples tweaked. Why are guys tweaking my pecs? <laughs> Every since I've been working out, I've developed a lot of chest and pectoral development. Guys at the gym are tweaking my nipples, and I'm confused as to what that means. Does it mean keep up the good work or something else? Oh, he's probably got a sign tape to his back. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen this before. Tweak him. Tweak him, please. Tweak him. <laughs> Tweak him. Oh, thank if, you. If I don't have, uh, I haven't developed my chest and pectoral development much. When you do that, like, do your nipples get like super beefy? I bet they could. I bet that's an out. There's probably a that you know in those all those muscle magazines. I bet that's one of the articles. Get beefy, hey, Stan. You know. Stan, I just want to say your pecs are rocking and your nips are super inviting. Your your nips are like they're round like a pepperoncini. And they're but they're they like are tip, winking at me. You know what I mean? The actual tipple I, is like plump, like a pencil eraser. And I I guess what I'm saying is daddy like I guess daddy like I, just, I have I have to find out what's up. I have to Do you mind if I just get it? Like I've been trying to develop my own pectoral development 
And like, but my nipples are just doing nothing. And what's fucked up is that my pecs are getting so big and so ripped, like two big juicy flank steaks. My nipples are the same size that they were six years ago. My they're these little like nothing nubbins, you like, know what I mean? They look like little beady chameleon eyes on the tips. Of these but I'm looking at yours. I'm looking at yours and you and know what I see? Yours like Mount Everest. Perfect. Perfect nipples. Round. Like, like Olympus rising above the Serengeti. Am I right? Mm. Are you showing your nipples enough butt? Because I think that that could really help to encourage their growth. What are you talking about? Who planted your nipples? Were they redheaded and angry? Show the nipples your buttocks. If you can figure out how to show your nipples your own buttocks, I think that you're, well, I don't know how your strength training is going, but your flexibility training is I think out I, of I control. I think I need to go ahead and take The Biggest Loser off my DVR subscriptions. <laughs> I do not think I can watch this show anymore in good conscience. I Here's the thing. It's, uh, Yahoo questions ask her. Your problem was the first time one of these dudes tweaked your nipples, why didn't you react strongly? That is that is the unanswered question of this. You don't want to make a, you don't want to make a is, scene though. What, what but it seems like you just went, hmm. You gonna journal to, about listen, this. Listen, this is gonna sound weird, but the next time Craig walks by, you have to tweak his nipples. The expression on his face is absolutely out of control. It looks like he's eating a, a sour warhead. <laughs> um, how about another Yahoo? Since we're in Yeah, rapid fire. Um, this Yahoo is sent in by Ashley Berghardt. Thanks, Ashley. It's by Yahoo Answers user Jared, who asks, Do people not realize McDonald's is not the only restaurant? <laughs> Burger King, Wendy's, Taco Bell are all across the street. <laughs> they were all dead on a night there was a home football game and a car show, yet McDonald's had a long line and drive through and standing room only in the lobby. We had customers angry because they had to wait longer than they wanted for their food, knowing how busy we were and short-staffed. There's those other restaurants, plus the car show and football game had concessions. <laughs> I want a McDonald's uh, like uh, uh, register clerk that chastises you for eating there. Wow. Really? You couldn't have gotten some tacos at the game? Oh, wow. Really? Okay. With the Panera across the street, you're here, huh? Huh? huh. Interesting. Huh. More than that, I want to see, like, maybe there's a, like, his boss is, like, roaming Yahoo Answers and comes across this question. It's like, hey, Craig. Craig. I hey. saw your post. Um, do you not want us to hit goal this month? Travis. I'm a small business owner, so if you could just not capsize my investment that would be fantastic listen this ma and pa mcdonald's i've been trying to get it off the ground my entire life and i don't need you i don't need you sabotaging we have worked so hard to get here build brand awareness and recognition do you remember we went through the whole litigation because we wanted to be mcdonald's with an extra n and they wouldn't let us do you, do you remember, remember that? how angry everyone was when we didn't have hamburgers on the menu Remember our struggles that we've had to overcome? We had those seasonal bratwurst for a while, and I said, hey, what if we make this the whole thing? <laughs> and we became McDonald's Bratwurst Depot, and, and God, who knew that McDonald's was so litigious to its own branches? Folks, thank you so much for hanging out with us this week. We hope you've had as much fun as we have. Uh, I do want to let everybody know that uh, Griffin brought me back toys from Japan and included on them... In those toys was this button that I could press to make this happen. Wake up! And it's a it's a button that makes a Japanese man talk. I'm sorry I didn't make better use of that during the program. I'm gonna try to do better. Well, I mean the problem is that it's not particularly funny. Wake yeah. up! Griffin, do the thing where you thank the guy for this stuff. I wanna thank John Roderick and the Long Winters. I've been thanking him for every episode for maybe a hundred episodes, so I can't believe Justin can't remember his name. Um, but, but Who? I, John Roderick and the Long Winters. Who's he? I don't. Thank you, Ron Joderick. I want to thank John Chodrick and the Long Winters. I know the band name. God damn my aphasia. Uh, for the use of our theme song, it's a departure <laughs> off the album, putting the days to bed. Uh, it's a great band, great album. Thank you to everybody tweeting about the show, like Lindsay, Sarah Ingram, Holly L. Peacock, Ben Sherman, Michael Collins, Corinne McShane, Schmo Z, uh, Dead Yell Corpse Edo. I don't think that's her actual name. Uh, but uh, thank you to everyone spreading the word. Thanks for the short, kind of weird, maybe a bit unpolished ep. Now that all the weddings and traveling are done for like two fucking months. Um, Remember, this is a bonus. This, this is, is a bonus a, episode. This is a, I didn't know this was going to happen. Uh, yeah, thanks for, thanks for sticking by us thick and thin. We'll get it together. 
We just gotta stop Someday. getting married for like a second. If we could just go one month without um, a wedding, that would be ideal. Just want to remind everybody uh, to uh, stop by Hulu Plus. You can binge on thousands of hit shows anytime, anywhere. Get an extended free trial of Hulu Plus. We can go to HuluPlus.com slash my brother. That's HuluPlus.com slash my brother. Check them out. They're really supportive of our show. We yeah, love them. Thank you. Thank you, Hulu. Um, this final Yahoo answer was sent in by TN Probst. Thanks, TN. It's by Yahoo Answers user Hannah Kirkup, who asks... Using her real name. I have diarrhea. Should I go to college? <laughs> <laughs> my name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, and me. Kiss your dad square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported.